In 2021, WWF Canada and researchers at McMaster University's Remote Sensing Lab released a national carbon map for Canada, which depicts carbon stocks in plant biomass and soils up to one meter in depth. The map and associated data can be used for a variety of purposes, particularly as they pertain to nature-based climate solutions in Canada. At WWF Canada, we've used the map to assess carbon stocks within current protected areas, and we've also evaluated the carbon storage potential of establishing new protected areas, factoring in elements of vulnerability and additionality. You may be interested in similar analyses, such as estimating the carbon stock within a community, private land, or an Indigenous protected and conserved area. Today, I'm going to walk you through a quick tutorial on how to estimate carbon stocks within your area of interest. So, what do you need? In order to do this analysis, you'll need access to ArcGIS, which is a paid platform for spatial analysis. If you don't have access to ArcGIS, feel free to reach out to our WWF Canada staff at science at wwfcanada.org to determine how we can best support you. All right, let's estimate some carbon stocks. So first things first, you'll need to download the carbon map from our account on Figshare. The link can be found in the accompanying one pager. The data is in raster format and represents the total carbon stock per pixel. Secondly, you will need to have your region of interest in a shapefile or raster format. This data could represent, for example, a protected area boundary or a land ownership boundary. Add these data inputs into a folder for quick access and set up your project in ArcGIS. With the data downloaded and ArcGIS open, we're ready to run some zonal statistics. Simply search for the tool Zonal Statistics as Table and select that option. The input raster or feature zone data is your data, so I'm going to use a protected areas boundary here as an example, so I have Fundy National Park. The zone field is required if you had multiple features within your data. I really just have the one protected area, so I'm just going to select the protected area ID. The input value raster is the link to the carbon data. And finally, the output table is simply the link to where you would actually like your output stored. And when you have that, simply click Run. Open the output table and look for the sum. This is the total amount of estimated carbon stored within the area. For me, this represents over 8 billion kilograms of carbon, or 8.38 megatons of carbon. And importantly, the units are in kilograms of carbon. So if you would like to have this number converted to, let's say, a carbon dioxide equivalent, you would then need to multiply by 3.67. That's pretty much it. That's how you can estimate a carbon stock within an area. As mentioned previously, if you have any questions, please feel free to email our WWF Canada science experts at science at wwfcanada.org and we'll be available to lend a helping hand.